Right, the Positive Games is back. Our special guest today, Jade Yorker. You might have seen him as Willie Weathers in the hit film, The Gridiron Gang, or as a young Jesus Shuttlesworth, and he got game. Jade, thank you for joining today. Oh, man, appreciate you for having me, brother. All right, man. Let's get right into it. So where are you from, and how did you get started in acting? I was born in, in North New Jersey. Um... Hmm. Then we, I lived in East Orange for a little bit. I uh, got a lot of family uh, from Jersey City, so spent a lot of nights there. Uh, lived in Manalapan. That's where I started, uh, like, through grammar school, um, all the way to, like, uh, all the way to high school. And um, then I went to Freehold High School. Freehold Borough High School, Howell High School, quite a few different high schools. <laughs> and then um, how did I get into acting? Um, a lady from the football team in Manalapan, uh, when I was playing Pop Warner football, saw my younger brother on the sideline and thought he was, like, real cute, said, yo, he'll be good for, the, you know, the acting entertainment business. <laughs> business. So she had, um, she had her son with the agency and um, she hooked him up with the agency and he started getting like a lot of print work, did like Blue's Clues, Parent, Hood, Mac, Parent Magazine and Toys R Us catalogs and stuff. So uh, I think the manager got a role. Her name is Tamara Markowitz, uh, still my manager today. Um, she had got a, uh, she had something come across for 11 year old, I was 11 at the time that she felt that um, I may be able to play the role. And so she said, do I want to audition? And um, I said, yeah, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I'll go ahead, you know. And um, because before then, I always enjoyed movies and stuff. And, and, you know, I mean, television isn't like how it was back then, where, you know, you may have like a couple TVs in a house. And when shows like Martin came on, or like, you know, stuff like that, or like uh, sports, you know, the whole family would crowd around the TV together, you know, yeah. and watch, watch television. So, uh, you know, I really enjoyed watching TV back in the day. And, and when I was, you know, I really enjoyed it watching with my mom. And when I did watch, you know, I would think how, how is that being done? So like, I kind of had in my mind already that, you know, it was like some acting going on. So I kind of just thought about it and like, I don't know, I'd be taking showers and stuff and I'd be like acting things in my head and stuff and seeing things. So I kind of had a vision before uh, the opportunity ever presented itself. So when they asked me, did I want to do it? I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know what I mean? I'll go rock out, give it a shot. And yeah. um, the first audition I went on was uh, the movie Hell's Kitchen with Angelina Jolie and uh, Makai Pfeiffer and William Forsythe and uh, directed by Tony Chen Serapini. And I went out there and went in about three uh, auditions, you know, for callbacks. Uh, I had the audition with Makai and um, I got the job. And ever since then, you know, she just kept me auditioning and um, I just kept bagging work. Wow. What was it like working, you know, when He Got Game came out? So can you talk about um, getting that role as far as, you know, did they tell you who you were going to play? Did they have somebody else in mind for you? Because I know a lot of times, you know, people think they're going to play one role and then they get another. So were you always scheduled to play that role? Mm -hmm. Well, lucky for me, that never really happened a lot throughout my career. I've been blessed to do over 40 films. I never really, like, got switched up with roles. Yeah. So I was going out for Young Jesus back then. And, uh, you know, it's just fun, man. Like, I always had fun. Like, go to audition, always had mad confidence, and just have fun with it was my thing. So I go in there. Spike Lee's there. 
We're just like, all right, let's rock out. You know what I mean? And boom, he told us what to do. Uh, Shorty Red was there at the time. A good friend of mine still to this day. Uh, he played Booger, the yeah. younger version of Hill Harper in the movie. And uh, I remember seeing him there and stuff. That's where we first met. And uh, maybe where we first met. We might have met on the commercial set or something. But, um, you know, I just went in there. It was just killing shit. Excuse my language, but, you know, I'm a competitor, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going hard. You know what I mean? I'm going in. I'm going hard. I'm giving it my all. Like, let's get it. And Spike Lee, uh, you know, he responded well had me stay you know so i stayed had to go in there a couple more times with different people and then um after the audition spike was like yo you hungry i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm hungry <laughs> like no nah. yeah so he was like all right he walked me downstairs we went downstairs he has my dad i think my dad was there with me at the time we went downstairs you know, asked me what I wanted. KFC was right there. I don't even like KFC today, which is the funny thing. And I think we ended up eating KFC. Or he got me some KFC. Then after that, after that, he introduced me to uh, a good brother named Earl. You know, I still kind of talk to him here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Earl was the guy that was going to teach me how to play basketball. He was going to be like the trainer to help me play ball. Okay. And then that was that was that was that audition experience for He Got Game. What was the what were those scenes like? You know, when you and uh, obviously the the biggest scene when you and Denzel face off. You know, when you get mad and obviously toss that ball, chuck it. What was that like? I guess behind the scenes playing basketball against him. And did you mm -hmm. think that that movie would catapult to where it's at today? Such an iconic movie. Um. I wasn't thinking about it then. I was just thinking about living the experience. Like, like as far as like doing my job as an actor, like just, just, just living the role till they say cut. That's it. That's you it. know what I mean? I ain't been thinking about nothing more after that, you know? Um, and it was cool because Denzel was mad cool. He was very down to earth and very real individual. I thought he was very similar in a way with how we approach things, meaning that, um, you know, when, when we went to set, we kind of stayed to ourselves, you know, like in our own little corner, our own little bullpen. Okay. And, you know, we just kind of had our own space. Like, you know, I'm thinking in my head, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's, what, I'm, how we approaching this, you know what I'm saying? And, like, that's how that's how we rocked. And then when it's time to get on the marks and, and, and go, like, we just did that and just went in, you know what I mean? And then it was just boom, you know what I mean? It was just boom, that was it, you know, magic happened. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so it was just a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, it was just a lot of fun, it was cool. And basketball stuff was cool too. So then that brings us to the Gridiron Gang. Um, you know, I remember when that movie came out, uh, obviously, you were one of the main focal points of the movie, um, which obviously is a, a true story. So you already spoke on, you know, having to train for basketball and things like that. So what was that like getting ready to go into football shape for that movie? Because I imagine they had you guys doing mm -hmm. the same type of deal. Uh, the football, I mean, I was already in shape. And, and when I got the script, got the script in New Jersey, they shot it in California. Um, they actually had to fly me out to, to California for the audition. So I might have got the script maybe like two months before I even got the role. And But when I got the script, I fell in love with the script. And it was over. It was all mine already. Like, I was, like, I was manifested in my mind that it was me. Like, it's me. That's me. <laughs> Like, during the days of my regular life, I would always just be, like, thinking back to the character and just thinking and being like, all right, I'm him. I'm him. This is how he would feel. This so I was working on my character two months in advance, you know? I was yeah. 20. I was 20 at the time. So I had to go back. I had to, you know what I mean, try to be a 16-year-old, 15-year-old, 
You know what I'm saying? So I had, to, I had to put myself in that mind state. So I would constantly, constantly be working on my character and just, you know, I just like manifested that whole thing two months before. And I had to audition. I still didn't even know if I got it, didn't get a call back or nothing, wow. you know, but I was still working on the script. And it was crazy. Like I memorized the whole script front to back. Like I was able to memorize that whole script in my head. So like I had everything down. So then by the time, I got a call saying, hey, it's an audition in California. I threw my, you know what I mean? I packed my my my, my, my Bruce Wayne <laughs> suit on. You know, yeah. I, I, I packed my Bruce Wayne suit on or, or, you know, my Superman suit on and came out the phone booth ready to rock. And, you know, I went in an audition. You know, I showed the director I was able to cry right there on the spot and pull that scene off, you know what I mean? And I yes. had a suit on, I had a blazer on, so I wasn't even looking like the character, but like, you know what I mean? I, I acted the shit out of that joint, like, you yeah. know? And then they had auditions where I was going against a lot of other well-known actors and they have us in there face to face and, you know, I just was bringing it, you know what I mean? I was just bringing it and then I ended up getting the role, so it was like, cool, let's let's work. But um, football shape, I was already in shape. I was working out and stuff. I already okay. knew how to play running back. I, I played running back, you know, through Pop Warner. I stopped in high school because I was acting so much. Plus, I was like 113 pounds as a freshman. And I'm looking <laughs> at these jokers talking about what? Y'all going to be playing what? Football? And I'm looking at the speed at which they playing, how big jokers is, and how hard they yeah. hit. And I'm like nah, bro, this don't really make no sense to me. <laughs> I'm going to stick with this acting thing, bro. Y'all can have it. And I'm glad I made that choice because all of the jokers I came up with playing in Pop Warner football yeah, through high school, I was seeing them all broke up. All of them. Oh, yeah. Shoulder joints on, cast, daggone crutches. You know what I'm saying? Jokers yeah. going out their knee. I was like, yeah. Glad I ain't do none of that shit. You made the right uh the right decision. Yeah. So what was the most fun about that movie? Obviously working with the rock, exhibit, uh the journey smallette was in that movie. Uh, there's a lot of well known people. So uh talk a little bit about maybe even off the set, you know, was it the same mm -hmm. people staying in themselves? Was it, you know, mm -hmm. all together? Um you know, I clicked up with a few people that I'm still friends with today. You know, like James Earl. Um, he's on Glee. He's doing a. He do a lot of stuff. He stays working. Um, he played uh, Madlock in that movie. And then I'm also cool with um, my boy. Jo excuse me, Joseph Lucero. Uh, my boy from San Diego. Okay. And, uh, yeah, he was just on the show Mayans. He was on Doctor Phil recently. You know, and uh, that was like, I think his first movie is extra. Like he has his own story. He came out of prison, like for real. And, you know, got opportunity to be extra in that movie. And like, he, his energy was just so great that like, like everybody responded to him and they was like, yo, we got to put you in the scene. <laughs> so yeah. you know, he ended up getting the part, like he ended up making just as much as I made, you know, wow. made during the movie, which was crazy, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that, that, so like, I, we clicked up a lot, you know, I went out to San Diego with him and he brought me to Mexico, showed me things and we was out there having a blast. Um, and you know, I will always invite a lot of the extras and people over to my, uh, to my apartment place where I had, and we like, cause I had a big pool there. So I throw like pool parties and stuff. Okay. So we have a blast, man. So what about like juggling? You kind of touched on it a little bit, juggling, acting, and then trying to be a kid. Cause you kind of said, you know, giving up football. Um, I imagine you were going to regular school still. And obviously when you shoot a movie, you've got a tutor on set. So what was mm -hmm. that like trying to juggle normal life and then keeping a job? Oh, once I started doing the tutoring, school didn't make no sense to me because we would knock out what the kids would do in a week or what we would do in a week of school within about a day's of work. Wow. Maybe about five hours, if that. So I was looking at it like, 
Like, we serious? Like, what's the point? Like, school is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, and plus me, I got a short attention span. So if you just stand in there talking monotone and all of that, like, I get bored. Like, I'm just sitting here for hours. Like, this is boring. Yeah. You know, this is super boring, bro. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, like get to the point. Like, you know? So school was very boring. Um, But I had fun, too. I found ways to make it fun. But, um, yeah, so it was, it was awesome once I started tutoring and get the heck out of school. It was, I was loving that. Get out early. <laughs> I was loving that. Mm -hmm. And plus, like, my school experiences, I say in Manalapan, I found it very discriminatory. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, was, it was weird. Like, I, like I'd be, we'd be better than, like, half of the basketball team, but they wouldn't pick us up for the basketball team. We wouldn't get a spot on the basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. <clears throat> it was a lot, it was a lot of, just a lot of discrimination in general, even amongst the kids. Like, like I'll be cool with mad, like, cause I was, grew up around all white kids and, and mostly white kids in, in, in Manalapan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so we'd all be like on the same soccer team, basketball team as younger. And then like, as we got older, like, it was just weird. Like, they just kind of shifted away. Like, I noticed myself going to say what's up, and you know what I mean? And, and like, yo, what up? Like, we cool, and yeah. But but seeing how they acting funny, like, towards me now, it's like, they shifting away. Like, they, like, like I'm cramping their style. Like, like, what? Like, what? You know, y'all corny. Y'all just trying to be down with them. And it's all corny. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little discriminatory stuff like that, man. Once you you realize, you know what I'm saying? Color. I'm I'm sure you had a lot of jealousy though growing up. Maybe obviously not you, but people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know there's haters everywhere. So when you start to make it, I'm sure there's people, you know, maybe in an old neighborhood or just people that you knew, you know, trying to bring you down. You know, nothing's ever good enough. So mm. what what was that like trying to? still just navigate and keep pushing forward because you know haters are everywhere but dealing with that maybe being younger man um uh, i mean you still deal with it today it just is what it is man i mean i just try i just show love and, and be as you know what i mean as, as good as a person that i can be to people like i say for one thing i don't have any friends you know what i'm saying i don't consider nobody friends i consider everybody associates outside of yeah. family like we associate with each other why because you know once you get backstabbed by our friends like you don't want to call nobody else your friend <laughs> yeah because that seems like to be the trend with friends is they disappoint you at some point <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? so i don't i don't consider friends i tell my kids the same thing have associates you associate with everybody cool and, you know, I show everybody the same love, fam love, you know what I mean? Yeah. As far as we moving and just acting, I treat you like family, you know what I'm saying? And, hey, if you cross me, I can take it from my family. <laughs> or somebody, <laughs> or someone I'm showing fam love to, I, you know what yeah. I mean? But I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't see myself, you know what I mean? Saying, yeah. oh, man, a friend got me. Like, no, I feel like an idiot. Like, there's no such thing as friends, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So I just try to just 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 stay positive, man. You know, you just always gotta remind yourself, man. Do you just gotta stay strong in what you believe and your principles and morals and, and, and have thick skin, body armor where what people perceive or say about you doesn't stick because that could eat eat away at you. You know what I'm saying? That could take you off your off your game. Oh, sorry. No, and, I, and I imagine the uh, the support system at home obviously has to be, you know, foundational. You have a strong support system. It's only going to help that much more. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk, uh, you know, at all the films and uh, projects that you've done, what do you feel so far has been your most, uh, you know, what are you most proud of of your work so far? If you had to name a couple, one. I did a show um, called, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Law and Order, I did a show, and it was, uh, played a character named Psycho Harrison, that was pretty fun, because 
I got the got the chance to play a daggone uh like a like a psycho killer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So so to play something as far from me like that was yeah. awesome. You know what I'm saying? Because I was able to have fun with it. You know. Okay. And I just liked liked that sh episode. It was uh, Sean Nelson was on that episode. Oh uh, man, I forgot my guy who passed away. Uh, one of the main uh, leads on that show. How I had the chance to work with. God bless him. Um, maybe you can find his name later and plug it in. Okay. But um, yeah, man. So it was cool. It was, it was cool to do that one. I was very proud of that one. It came out very well. And uh, of course, I'm proud of Gridiron Gang, even though I can't watch it no more. <laughs> I haven't watched it like since the, if I try to watch that movie, I, I just can't. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I must have watched it too much one day. <laughs> uh, how is that when people, uh, you know, obviously notice you? Do they still like, because I, I think a lot of people, hey, yeah, hey, that's Willie Weathers, you know? And mm -hmm. yeah, I played that guy, but that's not my name. Do you, you know, yeah. kind of go through that a lot? Like where people just see you as a character and not a person? At, at first, at first I was a little sensitive to it. Yeah. At first it took some while getting used to because it's like three different feelings I felt. Like at one point, like a lot of people be looking at me and stuff and I didn't know why they was looking at me. So like it was a bunch of dudes and stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm like watching my back. I'm like, hey, the dudes yeah. looking at me. You know what I'm saying? He's about to make a move or something, man. Keep your eye on me. You know what I mean? I'm like watching my back. I don't even know. Yeah. Come up later, you realize like, dang, man, they might have just noticed me from the movie. You feel me? Yeah, might have so, been a fan. And a lot of times people would see you and feel like they know you. That happens a lot. They're like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, man, where you been? Like, yo, where I know you from? And I'm like, no, I don't think you know each other. He's like, no, man, we went to high school, something together, man. You from Compton? I'm like, no, bro, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> you know what wow. I'm saying? So like that happens a lot. So like, you know what I mean? So I was always a little bit on edge with that because you never know what people may think yeah. they know you from. They could think you the guy that robbed them or did something bad to them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then that's for the police too. Shoot, police could be looking at you like I look like a criminal, but shit, they watch Law and Order. They remember <laughs> Psycho Harrison. You know what I mean? So, so, so I had to get used to that and put that in perspective. And then another thing, too, is I felt some type of way at some point earlier when people would be like, yo, Willie, Willie, or 88, and this and that. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't really feeling that attention because it's like, yo, I'm getting all this attention, but I ain't get paid. I didn't get, I didn't get, I didn't get what I feel I deserved for it. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, after doing a movie like that, for people noticing you and stuff like that, like, you should either be continuing to do projects with them people. Yeah. Or you should have had a big payday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we kind of taking care of a little bit. It protects you from when you out there on a the regular and getting seen and people like, you know what I'm saying? That, yo, 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 yo. That that could that's a that it could be a burden. You know what I'm saying? It, it could be a lot sometimes. Yeah. You know? But now, like it's all love. Like I don't like this is early how I was feeling. Like later now, like it doesn't bother me at all. At all, oh, okay. I'm so used to it, identifying it. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's no biggie. Like yeah, it's funny. Yesterday I was at the beach and somebody's like, "Hey, come over here." It's like you was on that show, sisters. I'm like, no. He <laughs> like, no. You look you look like the guy that's on that show, sisters. I'm like, you talking about Devell Ellis? I'm like, yeah. I did a movie with him. But that's not me. That's my boy. <laughs> Some funny stuff. I was like, dang. He's like, yeah, y'all look alike. I was like, I know. That's crazy. 